So welcome, Mr. Lucas uh, Lebel, CEO of Servier. We are really privileged to have you today with us. Servier is participating at Shield Africa 2021, and we are here to know more about their participation in the show, as well as uh, their interest in the market, both African and Indian. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Ms. Lucas. I know it's a very busy day, yet you have taken out your time for us. Thank you so much. Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to discuss uh, this growing and very uh, emerging fast growing market, actually, which is the anti drone industry. So, yes, uh, I'm here in Africa attending a, a very interesting defense show that is called the Shield Africa. And uh, well, I have to admit that the, the expectations we had uh, beforehand were quite Hi, happy uh, actually I've been met and uh, and even uh, and I was e even better satisfied satisfied than what I expected. The theme to this show, um, knowing and expecting the African continent to be one of the most interesting continents for the growing of the drone industry, and because what we do at at Cerber is protect sensitive sites and people from the threats that drones create. There is a very strong correlation between the drone industry and the anti-drone industry. So Africa being a drone land, typically, uh, we are very much interested in uh, in actually addressing this particular market. I think Africa is um, a, a very uh, relevant place to uh, to start a drone business because, well, number one, uh, there are a little bit less infrastructure than, less, let's say, in the Western world. Um, so drone is the typical perfect tool to connect some far distant uh, places with like high density of population, you know, like uh, logistical hubs. Uh, and, and you get to see that you, you see drones being used by uh, the medical sector. You see drones being used um, by, uh, by the police, by photograph, by the mining industry, by agriculture. Drones are being used everywhere with a lot more ease than you would see in the Western world. Uh, because there's just so much space out there that it's much easier to actually operate them. Uh, but unfortunately, you also see a growing number of people using drones um, in, um, in a bad way. And they create a number of threats on all sensitive facilities. And that's where we come into play. So uh, we came to Shield Africa uh, expecting to deal with, you know, like uh, different delegations coming from all the African countries who are concerned with this uh, growing threat. Uh, and I was... Uh, very surprised uh, to uh, to meet not only institutions, you know, like uh, uh, ministries of defense, but as well ministry of interior, so homeland security, and even for the protection of uh, critical infrastructure. So meaning the private sector, mm -hmm. which is also uh, one of the underlying customer segment that we want to address. And again, Africa is a very interesting continent in that particular regard. There are a lot of sites that need private sites that need protection. I'm talking about oil facilities. I'm talking about places where you extract some precious uh, resources, for instance. Uh, I'm talking about like gold mines, for instance. Um, but as well, some very particular uh, customers that you only find uh, in Africa. For instance, I don't know if you knew that, for instance, uh, poachers are using more and more drones to actually spot the animal. Okay. To that want to buy anti-drone solution to make sure that poachers cannot uh, cannot uh, cannot harm, of course, the, the animals. So there are a lot of different use cases, whether you deal with institutions, governments, various ministries, but as well the private sector, which is, as you would expect, booming uh, in this uh, emerging uh, continent. So very happy with how things uh, are going here. And that's also one of the reasons why we decided recently to establish uh, a joint venture uh, in Northern Africa. We chose Morocco for various reasons. First of all, uh, Morocco um, is a very um, um, steady country from a political point of view. Uh, it's growing, it's well developed. Uh, there is a, a strong relationship between our home country, France, and this particular country, Morocco. Um, one of the leading at the continent level all of these reasons, we decided to establish a joint venture with a local partner, EMDG, uh, that is very well established with the Moroccan uh, institutions as well as various other uh, African countries. And the goal of this joint venture is to establish a center of excellence 
for drones and anti-drone solutions. So we integrated as well a French uh, drone expert that is called Delta Drone Africa. And all together, Delta Drone Africa, Cerber Africa, and EM Digital, we aim to provide a complete uh, suite of solutions from people who want to use drone, people who want to buy drone, people who want to register their drone, their drone flight, who want to train on how to use, uh, but as well, how to make sure that they operate in a safe way. So how to track them, how to integrate them into uh, an airspace that is becoming increasingly crowded uh, and how we can make sure that the sky is safe for all by actually making sure that no rock drones can enter a sensitive airspace. So, so we aim at providing, and that's something quite unique at the world actually, okay. a complete uh, solution that is fully integrated uh, to, uh, to make sure that the sky is safe for all and to integrate the drone in a complex uh, airspace to eventually, what we hope for, uh, free the whole potential of this amazing innovation uh, about drone, of course. So um, we're going to have a specific test location where we intend to receive some, of course, African delegations to demonstrate our solution. But we're also going to have um, um, an operation team uh, being able to uh, act faster with more responsiveness uh, for all the African countries that we serve as clients, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with spare parts, with the technical expertise, uh, on, the, on the same time schedule of, of this country. So, yeah. I guess it shows that Africa is one of our priorities and we are now uh, more than ever to actually uh, address. Right. So now can we look something more about the specific defense market for drones and anti-drones in Africa? And how you are planning to tap that market? Right. So, I mean, there are some very interesting, um, um, interesting defense opportunities in Africa. As everybody knows, uh, Africa is unfortunately a continent where there are some uh, geopolitical tensions, where you can find in some areas uh, tensions and actually armed fights with some rebel groups. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and because of the, the very own nature of a the asymmetrical types of fights that you observe typically in Africa, Mm -hmm. you get to see a lot of drones being used, actually. And, uh, and particularly, you see the type of like civilian drones, so meaning very accessible drones being used by rebel groups. These people use drones to actually spy on conventional forces to coordinate some mortar strike, for instance, or any type of artillery strike uh, to observe the patrols, to observe the forces, the order of battle, all that kind of things. You also see drones being equipped uh, by do-it-yourself type of explosives, you know, whether it's like rifle grenades uh, explosive or like IEDs, for instance, being dropped in a very stealthy way onto conventional forces. So, I mean, there are a lot of various use cases where drones are being used uh, in a nefarious way in the context of the defense market of, uh, of armed forces. So for us at Cerber, it's one of our priorities to work, um, of course, abiding by the laws of the international defense market, and in particular of uh, the French control export uh, rules, uh, if, I, uh, if I may say, uh, to address the specific needs of those institutions to preserve uh, their own interest and make sure that their bases, you know, their uh, particular assets, uh, their people, of course, uh, is not at harm uh, by this typical, uh, by this typical uh, uh, rebel groups. So our strategy to address uh, this market is to either work directly with the institutions, so typically a Ministry of Defense who wants to uh, uh, to procure some anti-drone solution for his own interest, or what happens more often actually is to find and to establish a network of specific distributors uh, scattered around the, the 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 continent to actually uh, to actually have an even closer. A point of contact to deal and to interact with these people. But knowing that we've established a joint venture called Serba Africa, mm -hmm. the goal of this local presence is first to start working on Morocco. I think that there are a lot of uh, particular needs, especially for the defense market. Um, then to start addressing uh, some of the closest, the geographically closest countries around Morocco because of the proximity of the joint venture. And then for the furthest one, either decide to go 
and deal directly with them or to uh, uh, to find those very distributors I was referring to uh, and to kind of like, you know, spread across the, the continent. Right. So uh, that was about Africa. Now, are you looking forward to the Indian market, the Indian defense market? And if so, then how? What is your strategy to jump into the Indian market? Right. So the Indian market is definitely one of our highest priorities. Um, as everybody knows in the defense industry, is uh, it might be one of the most complex markets, especially when you come from the very Western world uh, where things are going differently uh, over there and the distance, of course, doesn't help. Now, saying that, um, the Indian market is expected to be, according to some analysts, even bigger than the whole Middle East, um, at least for the anti drone fight. The needs are huge. Of course, the population is... Uh, is absolutely uh, huge. Uh, there are a lot of infrastructure. Um, the land is actually uh, quite large. So you see uh, a lot of them scattered uh, everywhere on the country. You have needs for the defense market, for the homeland security, and for the, and of course, for the, for the private side. Talking about the defense market, I think the timing is quite important. Everybody knows as well the tensions between uh, India and its neighboring countries, whether you're talking about China uh, or you're talking about Pakistan. And so uh, the, the need to protect the border as well as the, the inner part of the country dealing with the Homeland Security Forces, uh, you have a lot of needs to, uh, to address. So um, for all of this reason, and also because India is, um, I, would, I would venture to say a close country for France, mm -hmm. the geopolitical uh, relationship between these two countries uh, is uh, not only good, but also even getting better over time. Um, I guess you witnessed uh, the recent delivery of uh, Rafale uh, aircraft fighters uh, to, um, to the country, to India, and that helps for a growing collaboration between our countries. So I guess it uh, creates a good ground to establish some new relationship with, um, with this particular part of the world. And this is why we started this particular initiative a few months ago, actually. Uh, and I can already say that we've already sold um, some solution uh, for the Indian defense market. Unfortun unfortunately, uh, and uh, hopefully you will understand, I cannot disclose uh, much about it, but I can say that we already deal at the defense level with the Indian uh, customer. Mm -hmm. uh, the relationship is good as well. And now that we've kind of like experimented a uh, value solution, use cases, deployments, and that we know that the solution provided um, well, on one side, satisfaction on where it sits right now, but also room for improvement to be tailored to the specific needs of the Indian customer. Uh, we want to fully dedicate uh, for this particular customer and go to the next level. So one of the particularities of the Indian market is, of course, the make in India. As a very fast yes. growing... Um, I was about to ask that. Of course. As a fast growing developing um, uh, country, uh, India wants, and I guess it's fair, uh, of course, on their side, to yeah. make sure that um, these very strategic know-hows and technical expertise in the field of the defense, um, of, of the defense industry gets kind of like, I mean, grows on Indian soil with Indian people, with Indian know-how to, uh, to participate uh, in the sustainable uh, and long-lasting uh, uh, technical development of the country. So we understand that there are some rules that we will have in the near future to, uh, to comply with. And one of them is, of course, the Make in India. Mm -hmm. uh, for maybe uh, uh, the, the viewers of your website that are not familiar with it, it means that if we were to deal at a larger level with an official Indian customer, yeah. part of the added value uh, of this particular contract would have to be settled, uh, would have to be managed at the Indian level mm -hmm. by some Indian people, by some okay. Indian companies. So. This is uh, the, 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 main, um, the main strategy that we have right there. So we have a number of partners um, uh, uh, in, uh, in India because it's so large that you can manage actually to have uh, various partners without crisscrossing their particular interest. And we are actually considering to delegate part of the added value that we provide in our solution locally in India to make sure that we comply with this rule and eventually kind of like... Uh, uh, end up with a win-win uh, with a win-win agreement uh, to uh, satisfy uh, the Indian official customer. Well, actually, to um, I mean, in India there are a lot of 
more companies who are doing this kind of work. So uh, how it is going to be with you? I mean, how you, uh, how Cerber is going to be different with the Indian companies who are developing the same kind of uh, technologies right sitting in India? Right. So, I mean, of course, there are some Indian defense companies and India is known to be a country uh, very performing in some specific fields, IT, software, um, and that type of thing is uh, quite useful when you uh, when you try to develop an anti-drone solution, right? I mean, there are software, algorithm, data fusion, all that stuff. Uh, you can find some pretty, pretty good uh, Indian engineers. So our goal is to make the most out of our respective strengths. Um, uh, I think it's it's fair and safe to come up with like a phased plan. Uh, uh, you don't want to rush in uh, uh, everything because of course you're talking about intellectual property. And so it's a kind of like a sensitive subject. Uh, so, so as we sell more, as we develop this Indian market, as we get to know more our partners, I think we will increasingly um, uh, uh, share the value with the Indian partner going towards more and more differentiating assets and, uh, and capabilities of this particular country. So first, I think it's about making the most of the presence of the partner uh, to come up with like a more responsive um, uh, approach with the customer in terms of spare parts, in terms of deployment, in terms of training. But as, as we will stay in this country, hopefully, my goal is to um, make the most of the Indian capabilities uh, that are very differentiating maybe in the software, maybe in the technical roadmap, uh, probably in R&D uh, to kind of join forces and, uh, and, and help this Indian partner uh, get uh, at the level where, where he wants to be. But again, it needs to be phased. It needs to be cautious. It needs to be, uh, uh, it, it takes time. I think, it, I think it, it, it will take time. So first of all, one step at a time, uh, let's make sure that we can answer the needs uh, in a very responsive way. Let's make sure that we have all the capabilities to serve our customer uh, in, a, in a very short time frame. And, uh, and as we get to know more our partner and more his strengths, let's, uh, let's uh, free all the potential of this uh, partnership and let's join our forces on, uh, on the R&D, which is, of course, as you would expect, what it's all about in terms of uh, defense capabilities. Great, uh, Mr. Lucas, it was such a pleasure to hear you. And let me compliment you. You have been a great speaker. I really liked your confidence about your products, about your company. It was really great to know you. And uh, it was uh, very nice. I got to know a lot of things about Serbear and how uh, I hope this partnership with India as well, it works well for you. And uh, we wish you a great show in Africa. We wish you a great uh, time ahead there. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, uh, Chaitali. I enjoyed our conversation. Perfect. Goodbye. Same here. Pleasure was mine. Goodbye. All right. Bye-bye.